system like this, then what you can do is really quite nice. You can check to see if it's working, and then if it's not, roll back and make it exactly like nothing had ever happened. Another, the next one, another, it's quite a few of these, aren't there? Um, another one of the items we're thinking to do is, um, so we've talked about the story of using SQL source control and using uh, continuous integration. Um, what we'd really like to do is add the, so for some projects this makes perfect sense. Right? Everyone should be using source control, everyone should be using CI. Well, maybe, but maybe not. I mean, if you've got a really small project and it really doesn't make sense to go through the extra effort, what about that? How does that work? So what we'd like to do there is we'd like to have the ability to publish your database and publish your uh, websites directly from either Management Studio or from Visual Studio. So that's where we're going to publish. Um, actually, the last point of disconnected development, I already explained that. So that's the one of incorporating SQL Packager into the story and having the ability to set remote, um, sort of disconnected deployments. So, that's uh, essentially the presentation. Uh, I think we mentioned the white paper. There's also a white paper on continuous integration as well as a deployment manager white paper. And they're available in the main room. Um, and in summary, in the back. In the, in the, at the back there. Ah, oh, thank you, David. Put them there. Great. Um, and uh, in summary, uh, we've seen that automated deployments can make life easier. We've seen that PowerShell and regular tools can help with that. Uh, and also, there's a free EAP of Deploy Manager available on the website that you can take for a spin right now. So please give it a go. Let us have your feedback. Now, any questions? Okay. Uh, have you, uh, or does this work now with uh, SQL 2012 and PowerShell? We don't know. Uh, yes, it does, yeah. Thank you. Oh, sorry, yes. I always forget to repeat the question. Uh, does it work with SQL Server 2012 and PowerShell 3.0? Yes, it does. Okay, fine. Uh, with the variables, is there any auditing around that? If somebody were to go and change the variables and stuff, it seems like it really mess up with Okay, so the question is, is there any auditing around changing the variables? Um, not at the moment, so in the same way as we were looking to add permissions to enable people to deploy to certain environments, we'd definitely be looking at uh, making sure that only uh, you know, allowed permitted people are able to change things like variables, for example. But even if they're changed, could you tell what they changed from to? Is it tracking, tracking the changes? It's definitely, it's definitely something we're going to consider, yeah. Regarding the uh, automatic rollback on the immunity section, mm -hmm. what's the thinking about that going beyond what you're already doing like Team City when you have a, a step failure on a build and you can have an action to explicitly roll back or take some remedial action? What, what is that going to do in, that's superior to that? And will it still signal a failure uh, back to Team City or whatever you are calling from? Okay. So the question was a continuous integration um, you could put uh, steps in place at the moment to actually uh, automate rollbacks. Um, and what is deployment going to do above and beyond that? Did I get the question right? Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so, first off, um, there's obviously the visibility aspect. It's the fact that you can see which versions are in which environment, when a deployment would fail. You'll be able to see very clearly this is the version we had before. We've got a history of all of the changes we've deployed previously, um, and we can see which ones have failed. So there's that aspect to it. Um, another aspect is that um, it, this, this isn't the case right now, but we're looking to add uh, the ability to um, validate, do lots of validations ahead of a deployment. So to do things like um, make sure that the uh, database is in the exact state that you require before uh, deploying the, uh, running the upgrade script. So we're looking to do a lot of those things ahead of time before you even go anywhere near changing the database. So you'd be able to do that for all of those different components of your application. Um, so I think that's something that would be very nice, give a lot of additional security, take it even back to the point of, you know, less, less failed deployments, basically. You can fail it much earlier without changing anything. <laughs> okay. All right, so talking about more complex scenarios, maybe my deployment scenario is more complex than it needs to be, and I need to look at simplifying it make something that is a trust and automated solution to, but one, load balancers. So our production environment will have a load balancer, our development environment won't, our 
staging environment probably should have a load balancer so we can replicate doing that, but right now it doesn't. Uh, when pushed into our production environment, there's a dance that has to be done to ensure that our upgrade to our production environment happens with minimal downtime. I've also wrestled with, you know, do you do deployments Friday night when no one's around, or do you wait till Monday morning when everybody's there? Because it never failed that if you pushed a major bug Friday night, and we didn't find out about it until Monday. So I've adopted you push when people are around, and your final round of testing is and user is using it. Uh, and I want my development staff there and present to fix the problem in a timely fashion, and um, they don't answer the phone at the beginning. So. And we're Tuesday. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and we're so, um, so, so, if I have some other question, um, so in the case of you have a load balancer, and you know, you really need to, to minimize the downtime. How is that going to work in the system? Is it, you know, it sound fairly complicated scenario. Um, so the idea there, um, at the moment you saw when I was looking inside the project, and you saw the various steps that we had, only had in this example two, I had a database step, I had an application step. Um, the idea there is that we could add um, really quite a lot of other options there. For example, we could add a reconfigure load balancer step. Um, and you can put that in there so that it can all execute in sequence um, and you can basically take it as part of the process. So that's the idea there. Okay. Um, I'm assuming the team so you can do this, but most continuous integration uh, servers can, can do something similar, like find multiple steps and run PowerShell and things like that. So why not use Team City for deployment of the entire application? Aside from what you said about the visual confirmation. Aside from the visual aspects. So the question was, aside from the uh, visual aspects, how does this differ to um, a continuous integration system? And what you can do around it, what you with that? Um, I guess the answer to that question is, um, it's really the um, deployment manager or systems like this. I mean, deployment is a, is a big problem, right? And um, so having a tool that's really specific, really focused on solving that one problem, and solving it really well um, is really important. So I think that's where we're going to, as we add specializations out of the box, as we have the ability to deploy all the various different components and without having to make any effort, that we try and minimize the amount of scripts that you might have to write to integrate with those continuous integration systems um, so that you can have uh, components that you can trust, components that you can rely upon to actually deploy your software. Um, so I think that's the, the angle that we're I saw that there were connection details in the screen. Mm -hmm. It may be possible that someone who is tasked with deploying shouldn't have credentials to the database they're deploying to. Is it possible that we can obfuscate certain variables and just turn that back to the call start? Okay, so the question was can we obfuscate certain variables like passwords? Um, yes, I think we. We're quite aware of the fact that uh, we need uh, a data type other than a string in the uh, variable <laughs> section. So uh, yes, we'll definitely be adding um, sort of various uh, sensitive uh, fields in there as well later. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah. how much time do we have? One more question. Five minutes. Yeah. Can you do a uh, like selective deployment, like only release certain objects, like in this office, for instance, tables or views, or receive from the next one? Okay. So the question was, can we deploy only certain objects? Um, so if I just so uh, manager now. So basically, um, so I love to use the access to So I mean, you, so the packages that you create um, only get updated whenever you change the compo a particular component. So you could, uh, when, you, when you make a change to the database, a new package would be made for the database, and then when you deploy. Um, that would be sent across. Um, so it, it's not necessarily rebuilding every single aspect of it at each time. But I guess you also may be asking about in terms of the amount of uh, data that's being sent across. Is that the angle you're thinking of? Um, mostly just the objects. Mm -hmm. so it's like, for instance, we have TFS and we have developers that are working with TFS teams. And some of them get done before others, so we would like to keep on you know, moving up the chain across the environment. Mm -hmm. Um, so at the moment, the, um, the packages that we're building with the CI system um, automatically include uh, the, the scripts folder, uh, so it includes all of the objects in there. 
Um, it is something we could, if it turned out to be a problem for people, if it was including too much, too many objects, uh, we could potentially look at optimizing that. But it, it does have, it does afford certain advantages if you can include that, because you can do things like the, the pre-validation, the post-validation of those, those kinds of steps, which are actually quite nice. Does it respect shelled changes? Uh, does it respect shelled changes? Um, I'm not sure I know enough about shelled changes uh, to answer the question. Let's say. Hi. This is kind of related to the question about uh, when you individual objects, but you said one of your future focuses was migration scripts. Mm -hmm. If uh, if you commit to SQL source control, you actually write a migration script. Yes, so the question was, uh, will the deployment system support migrations, and if so, how will it do it? Um, so yeah the, yeah, the idea is exactly that, that we will, and I don't think it's a great, it's not a particularly large piece of work for us to have this in, uh, we really just need to include the migration scripts inside the package. Um, for the dynamic deployment, we need to include them in there. Uh, for the static deployment, uh, where you've got the scripts in there from the very beginning, you know, with the opportunity to review those scripts all the way through, um, we can actually just do that ahead of time. You don't even need them to be in a package. So, so they're not currently in the package? They're not currently there at the moment. That'll be coming very soon. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, suggested so who asked the best question? That is a good question. <laughs> so I was, at, at first I was thinking it might have been just between the load balancer question and the timing of check-ins. But then the filtered ob filtered objects are, or shelving, those are also good contenders too. You see, I'm inclined to think that actually, I don't know, for me, I think rollback is something that we really need to try and get right. Um, and so I, I think I'm going to go with the, uh, the gentleman who asked about uh, rollback. Win. Awesome. Here we go. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Uh, we have drinks next door, I believe, in the main room. I think so. Yeah, they're not there, so they're somewhere else. We'll find them. The downstairs? Drinks are downstairs. Well, now we know. Okay, thank you. White papers at the back. Come get your white papers. So you don't know enough about Sheldon. Strongly suggest in this sequel source support Sheldon. All this will actually work. Right.